Enrico Palermo, the uh, head of the Australian Space Agency. Thanks very much for joining us on Australian Space TV. Yeah, happy to be here, Chris. Thanks for, thanks for joining us at the forum. Wonderful. 15th Australian Space Forum, uh, five years old for the Australian Space Agency. Uh, maybe just an overview of your observations here today and where you feel the agency is uh, as well. But also the federal budget's coming out today as well. So it's quite a, uh, a, a momentous day, if, if anything, maybe an inflection point, do you think? So Forum, uh, you know, it is the 15th Australian Space Forum. And let me start by recognising the Angie Thomas Space Foundation. They've done a, a terrific job once again. I think a thousand attendees. Yeah. And so this forum has once again proved itself as the place where the Australian space sector comes together. <laughs> But particularly, it's also the place now, and this has been repeated several forums in a row, where we're able to bring the, the world of space yep. uh, to Australia. So we're absolutely thrilled to have uh, Yamakawa-san, Dr. Yamakawa, the head of uh, JAXA, the Japanese Aerospace and Exploration uh, Agency here, alongside counterparts from uh, the European Space Agency, New Zealand Space Agency and others. So quite a momentous week, uh, a lot of energy. There's over 80 exhibitors uh, in the hall here, and I think they're all signals uh, of the growth we've seen in the sector since the agency was formed almost five years ago. Yeah, well a thousand attendees is, is sort of underlines where the industry is at. I think the other thing I picked up last night was the first time the president of JAXA has been to Australia and I was almost blown away. Uh, it's great to have JAXA here. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you about was that regional cooperation. Mm -hmm. Can you give an overview of where Australia is within the region? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think the reputation of the industry still has a way to go or it's it's taken five years to put us on on sort of the president of Jax's uh, travel uh, list as well where, where do you yeah. find that we are in the region so I think very quickly we have you know we're, we're an emerging space leader but I think that's really rapidly moving to the opportunity to show some regional leadership and we have had regional leadership in several technologies such as remote sensing and the way we analyze uh, earth observation data for decades obviously deep space communications yep. uh, but more so what we're seeing now is uh, because we have a diverse ecosystem building across a whole bunch of priority areas I think the world's paying attention that's why we have JAXA here it was just in March we had the head of NASA and the deputy head yep. of NASA here uh, we've had you know delegations uh, the head of the Italian Space Agency was here a few years ago so I think the world has recognised that we can play a, a meaningful contribution uh, to the space sector in the region. Uh, for us and the government, there is a big focus on how do we use space data, space technology, space services to, to really work on some of our, our great challenges. We have challenges here in Australia addressing the, uh, the impacts of climate change, whether it's drought to extreme precipitation. Uh, those, those problems aren't germane just to Australia, they're germane to our partners in the region and, and I think that is where you'll see a lot of regional collaboration head. Do you think we cover all aspects of space? Is there any sort of market gaps internationally that Australia is going to be particularly strong in, uh, particularly from our coverage, ground stations uh, mm -hmm. in, in given the southern hemisphere exposure, uh, launch capability now up in the Northern Territory, and uh, yeah. South Australia here as well and in Queensland. Any particular gaps, maybe on the, on the data science and the downstream uh, services, is there up, up, uptick needed within the, in the market here? Yeah, we've um, we've done a lot of research on this. So we uh, over the years have worked on our technology roadmaps in our, in our priority areas. And a key part of that research is where are our gaps? Where should we invest from the commercial sector and, and, and government uh, in areas of, of what we call our focus segments? And those focus segments are both not just gaps but areas of opportunity. Yeah. What I like to say is we have several unfair advantages in Australia and how do we capitalise on those unfair advantages in, in a meaningful way to support cooperation. So obviously our geography is a, is a very unfair advantage, our view of the sky, low population density, low air, maritime and air traffic. That's why SSA uh, from a geography perspective but also launch is, is very interesting and yep. once we see launch in the nation we really start to see the whole value chain yeah. uh, of space activities. What can we do to, to, to support the industry more? Do you think, it's, it's a hard question in terms of is the government doing enough, uh, but is it, is it, will there come a time when the government steps back uh, and the civil space sector needs to look after itself, it can't rely on funding over a longer term and needs to find customers? Do you think that that's happening at uh, the required pace? And the next question I'll have after that answer is things like workforce mm -hmm. uh, and workforce development. But, yeah, just government backing away a little bit, uh, creating sort of the, the space uh, for the market to grow into. Uh, do you think that's about about right now after five years, or 
where, where do you see the pendulum? Space remains a priority for government. Uh, yeah. It is so critical to everyday life, from, from weather forecasting to navigation to our financial systems, and that's well understood. It's critical infrastructure uh, for the nation. The government continues to invest. If you look at uh, recent awards on space programs, to even some of the the science and research has been invested in for things such as the Australian Research Council Centre of Excellence yep. for plants in space, uh, yep. you know, and, and the eye launch, which are the, the DESI trailblazers. Um, so there is dollars uh, going into this sector from government. What's really interesting to see at this point is we're starting to see the uptick in private placements. If you look at Advanced Navigation, Abyss, Fleet, Gilmore, these companies have done significant rounds uh, in, in, in recent years. So it, it's, it's a combined effort uh, to, to grow the sector. As government, our role is, isn't just about funding, it's providing uh, a regulatory framework yep. uh, that enables entrepreneurialism but balances that with public safety and we're very, very focused on, on that responsible element. Uh, we're the front door of the world, so let's bring international partnerships. So our rover mission with NASA, which we got incredible leverage. You know, this was a $50 million investment from the Australian government that has leveraged a ride to the moon with NASA. Yep. So that's bringing in order of magnitude another 40, you know, 40 odd million dollars. So, so we, as Rolls government, is to open that door, provide opportunities for collaboration. And we're, we're talking with the Japanese Space Agency uh, about the MMX mission, which we think will open up science opportunities for Australia. So it is, a, it, it's, it's systematic and you need to look at all the things, uh, not just funding, but what are the enablers, uh, what are the barriers uh, we need to reduce. Uh, touching on workforce, that is a critical uh, barrier, I guess, at this point to, to growth of the sector. We're very focused on this. Uh, we held uh, two national forums last year on the space workforce, and right now that's infor informing what, what activity we take. You know, we can write a strategy, but what are the concrete steps, what are the things we can do? And you start to, us to do some of those. You start to see us having done some of those. We launched the Kids in Space program last year. It's accessed and reached over 10,000 students in primary schools around the nation that inspiring them, not just for space, but STEM careers. So it's not just space that has not enough engineers yeah. and scientists. If you look at quantum and AI and robotics, those enabling areas, there's also a strong need there. Uh, we're also making sure we build a diverse workshop, so, uh, workforce. Sorry. So we're really pleased to launch the National Indigenous Space Academy last month yep. uh, with NASA, which will send some uh, Indigenous interns to JPL. Would you like to see more uh, projects in Artemis? Do you think uh, we got enough of the pie there? Uh, I think there's an incredible opportunity for Artemis Australia to play a bigger role in yep. Artemis. Uh, the rover mission is our first step. It's a bold, bold step. Yep. Uh, and it's really aimed to demonstrate the capability we have in remote operations. Uh, we've got an organisation, uh, Advanced Navigation, that's using their inertial software on a, on a CLIPS lander with intuitive machines this year. Yep. And they're going to be shadowed by uh, Fugro's uh, Spark facility in Western Australia, which the, the government co-invested with Fugro and, and the WA government. So they're all signs, I think, of, of the role we can play. We, uh, we talk about Team Artemis Australia and we look across the grantees and partners we've invested in over the, the first four and a half years of the agency as well as the infrastructure we have that's a supporter. And it, it's quite a compelling uh, story of some, some low technology readiness level but some stuff that's up at the TRL 8 and 9 level so we're ready to contribute that. So we can play a role, we are a founding signatory uh, to the Artemis Accords. I just came back from the United States where that, that sense of and, and want to collaborate uh, is very strong. We visited NASA Ames, we visited NASA Johnson Space Centre, of course we met, we met with uh, NASA here in Australia and at Space Symposium and uh, I think the door is open for us to do more. Um, maybe a takeaway, we were in uh, Colorado Springs as well, what were some of the key takeaways from the Australian Pavilion uh, and any those key, key sort of uh, MOUs that were being signed, but yeah, any personal takeaways that you thought Okay, that was a, a good symposium for Australia. Yeah, we had a great present. We had uh, over 30, 30, uh, 30 companies uh, representing the trade uh, delegation and we yeah. worked closely with Austrade and our, our partners across government and then Defence Space Command uh, to make that happen. So I think, you know, talking to international c counterparts, it was, it was clear Team Australia was on show again yeah. after our successful uh, showing last year. I was really impressed by the memorandum of understanding that was signed. We saw uh, Neumann Space, uh, Equatorial Launch Australia, uh, and Southern Launch, and hopefully I've missed anyone, sign MOUs, and they're yeah. very significant. And again, they, they talk to the strengths we offer uh, to, the, to, the, to the global space community. Well, look, last one, uh, you're five years old uh, in terms of the ASA. Where do you hope the ASA will be in another five years? Is there any, you, you're still doing your roadmap program, I take it. What's the next roadmap? Uh, and where would you like to see the ASA in about five years? So we have a critical role. Uh, we have a critical role to shape national capability about space. 
We have a critical role to uh, build international partnerships that supports our, our, our broader foreign, uh, foreign policy uh, objectives. We have a critical role uh, to inspire. Um, and, and so in five years' time, we should still be doing that as, as the nation's uh, space agency. Uh, in five years, we'll be getting close to our first lunar rover, uh, yeah. getting to the surface of the moon, and that's going to be a big moment uh, for the nation. And I think you'll, you'll see uh, a lot of these uh, startups in the ecosystem really scaling, and we're starting to see the signs of that with, with some of the companies now starting to drive revenues. So I think more than ever, our role to work uh, internationally uh, will be prevalent. You know, we have uncertain geopolitical times, how does space uh, enable diplomacy? How does it enable science? How does it enable us to address shared challenges? Fair enough. You're definitely a game changer. Everyone speaks very highly of you, Enrico. But I think uh, I think Pam Melroy mentioned ASA is it now the front door to Australia. They've got somewhere to go uh, for that for those partnerships, I suppose. But keep up the great work. Thank you very much for joining us today on Australia in Space TV, and enjoy the rest of the forum. That's very kind. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks Thank you. Enrico.